So last time we left off with this scene and we started, we set up a health bar and we uh, created an actor. Uh, we had already created the ground, which the ground is really not useful in this case, but it demonstrated a tileable uh, sprite. If we play the game, you may remember that if we use the WASD keys, we can move around the scene. And we have the health bar. The health bar is showing the correct length. So I multiplied the percentage by two, which means the width of this should be exactly 200 pixels. But today we're going to take a look at uh, how do we manage collisions? Well, to do collisions, though, it makes sense to have something to collide with. And I really don't want the bear to take damage just because it's standing on the ground. So I'm going to add another object. And before I started today, I actually uh, went in and made a copy of the bear and then modified its color and just saved it into my project folder. So it's already there. We're going to call this the enemy bear. And we'll add an animation. We will add, you can see there's my enemy bear. Just change the coloring of it. And now we are ready to go as far as coding the collision so that when our bear collides with the enemy bear, it takes damage. So let's go ahead, apply that, and we can drag an enemy bear in there. And I should have actually gone and, and edited this image so I don't have to keep resizing these, but I'll just hold shift and, and scale it. And so there's my enemy bear. And um, we need to write some code now to actually take damage. And there's a couple of things I'm going to do here because if you just set up collisions and take uh, health away from collisions, that means that every step of the game that the collision is occurring, you're going to lose health. And that's not very realistic. Most games make it so that you you lose health in increments of time so that it doesn't all just disappear magically uh, instantly. And so I'm going to actually set up a timer. And to do that, I'm going to add an action. I'll go find timers and time. And I'm going to start a scene timer. And then in quotes, it's very important that it's in quotes because this is actually a name. I'm going to uh, set up a timer for last hit. And this is how I'm going to keep track of whether the last, uh, uh, when was the last time that my player got hit. Now, it would actually be better, though, since this is only for my player's health, I should actually do this here. So I should start a timer for the object, not for the whole scene. So if I use these timers down here, these are for the whole scene. If I do it up here, I'm only doing it for the current actor. And that would mean that then I could have multiple players on the screen and they'd all have their own timers running for their own last hit, which makes more sense. So I'm going to choose the player and the timer for this player will be last hit. And I'll keep track of how long ago was the last hit. And that way, um, if the last hit was a very short period of time ago, like milliseconds, it won't do more damage. So I'm going to sit, uh, hit OK there. And now I've got my timer. And I need to add an event then. So I'm going to go up and add just a standard event. I'm going to drag this down here, though. And I'm going to add a condition for when the timer reaches a certain value. But remember, this is for the objects timer. So I'm going to go into objects. I'm going to go find timers. And I'm going to find the value of a timer. And so I need to decide how often do I want damage to be taken when I collide with something. And in this case, uh, I need to choose who does the timer belong to. Well, it belongs to the player. The timer's name, it has to match exactly. So last hit, make sure it matches exactly. And then how long do we want to wait for more damage to be taken? And it's going to be in seconds, but you know what? How about if we do half a second, so 0 
And that way, every half of a second, if I'm still touching it, it's, it's going to do more damage. So that's the first step. The first step is we don't want to be taking uh, damage until half a second has passed. But the second thing I need to do is I need to find out, am I actually hitting the enemy? So I'm going to add another event. And this event, I really only want to do this if enough time has passed on my timer. I don't want to keep checking the collision. I only want to check it if at least half a second has happened. So what I'm going to do is drag this event in and notice now it becomes nested inside of the previous event. That way this event will only get checked after this is true. So after half a second has passed, then I'll check for a collision. So I'm going to go check for collisions now. So I'll go to, it's an object issue here. And is the object colliding? So I'll check to see if it's a collision. And then I choose the two objects that I want to collide. So in this case, the player and the enemy. And later on, you can actually set up groups for collisions. But for now, we'll just do single objects. And then we'll say OK. And if my player has collided with the enemy, then there's a couple things that need to happen. The first thing I want to do is I want to reset this timer so that it keeps track of the last hit from now. So every time I hit, I need to reset that timer so that it will start counting again. And I'm going to go add an action. I'm going to go find, remember not this timer, it's the objects timer. So object timer, I'm going to reset the timer. So start or reset a timer. And it's for the player. And then I need to make sure once again that the name has oops the name has to match exactly what i used before so it, i used last hit and then i will actually do uh, just a good practice as a programmer is to do a visual scan and make sure that when you are typing things like this that you're you're actually looking that yes those names all match up okay so i've reset the timer so that it will start counting again but then I need to actually take health away from my, my player. So I'm going to add another action. And we're going to go uh, not to this variables, because remember, the health belongs to the player. So I'm going to go to variables for the object. For my player, there's the health for my player. And I'm going to subtract some health away from the player. So let's say every time I take a hit, I'll take away 10 units of health, 10% of my health. And that's quite a bit, but that, that'll work for now so that you can see the health bar moving. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to play this, and it's not going to work. And then we'll talk about why it doesn't work. So if I play this, I move over, I'm touching the enemy, notice that I may want to work with the order that things are drawn on the screen, because probably the player should be in front of the enemy. But um, we'll deal with that later. But no nothing's happening. Well, it turns out that right now I have zero health. <laughs> but the reason I'm not seeing it is because I haven't updated the health bar. So if you look back at my code here, the only time I set the width of the health bar is up here at the beginning of the scene. It never resets the health bar ever again. So there's a couple ways to manage this. And the easy way is just to create an event that always runs and always updates the health bar. The problem with doing it that way is now you are always updating the health bar. So I personally am just going to only update the health bar when it changes. So I'm going to add an action. And I need to change the appearance of the health bar. So if you remember, that's sprites and the size. And I'm going to change the width. Now, I can go through and do all of this. But if you remember, I've already done these steps one time once before. 
So even though I can go through all of this and set it exactly to what it needs to be, the easier thing to do is to go copy what I've already done. So I'm going to click up here and highlight it. I'll right click and copy that. And then if I come down, notice that when I hover over add action, one of the things I can do is paste an action. And so I'm just going to paste it in there. That way I don't have to reformulate all of the code for this. Once I have code that works, just use it again. So now if we run our project here, let's see what happens when I move over the enemy. So now you can see the health bar is actually changing because now I'm updating the health bar while I'm colliding with the bear. Now the other thing that I haven't talked about in terms of collisions is every object has, well, not every object actually, you can actually remove the collision box from an object, but generally objects will have a collision box. And if you want to change how the collision happens, so like uh, maybe you only want a small collision box so that they have to really be overlapping each other before damage happens. I can actually change that by going to the object and editing it. And notice there's an edit hitbox option here. So I'm going to edit the hitbox and I'm going to go, whoops, I closed out of it accidentally. There we go. I'm going to scroll here and I'm going to zoom in and out by holding control. And I'm just going to get a good view of that. And I can use a custom collision mask. So custom collision mask, I'm just going to add a polygon. And by default, it's just going to add a rectangle. And I could drag these points to where I actually want the collision to be occurring. Now, I'm sure some of you are noticing that that doesn't really fit the shape very well. And that's true. But in terms of game performance, you usually don't want the a collision box to be too detailed because the more points you add to this collision box, the more processing it takes to actually calculate collisions. But since I only have a couple objects, I'll just show you that if I want, I can add some more points. And then I can take those points and start to refine the collision box shape around the outside of this figure. And, uh, oh, oops, I accidentally added an entire new shape and that really wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, notice though that it's giving me a warning. It says polygon is not convex. And the reason for that is it becomes much more difficult to calculate collisions when you have curves, inward facing curves in your collision box. So right here, see where that bends inward, that's not okay. So what I'm gonna do is adjust this so that I get a nice outward facing curve. And let me add another point here. Oh, notice that I'm gonna need to redistribute these around. And then once I'm happy, now notice I can't do this because now it's concave again. So I'm going to just have to, uh, you know, be okay with what I get, I guess. And once, once I'm happy with the shape of my collision box, then I can, or my hit box, they call it here. I'm going to close out of that and I can do the exact same thing to the enemy bear. But I want to show you that you don't have to fill up the whole shape. You can actually uh, decide, I only want the enemy to be able to do damage if I'm touching the mouth or something like that. That's the dangerous part in a bear, right? So I'm going to use a collision box here. I'm going to add it and I'll just put it right over the mouth. And that way I have to touch the mouth now to actually get uh, have damage taken okay so I, I have total control over how this works so I'm gonna close out of this now and we will run this game and you'll notice now that if I just touch the outer edge of my bear or if I go across the top of the bear 
or the bottom of the bear. Notice I'm not taking any damage because that's not over the mouth. But once I move into the mouth region, then I start taking damage. And so that is an example of how to set up collision, uh, update the health bar, and to uh, manage the hitboxes of your objects. So um, in the next uh, session, we will look at some more advanced features. And uh, one thing we, we haven't done yet is we haven't talked about the difference between object variables, scene variables, and uh, global variables. And so we will address that because if you remember, we created a score in the first session and we've never done anything with it. So we will tackle score in the next one. Take care.